Sonic Heroes is a pretty fascinating Sonic title as it requires you to complete the game by switching between a speed, flying, and power character, or Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles as you go through. But what if we told Tails and Knuckles to take a hike and only beat the game as Sonic? Would it be possible? Do we really need them all? Or are they just trying to take Sonic's spotlight? Well, thankfully, there's one person in the world that's been trying to accomplish this for several months already, and lucky enough, he was already a fan of the channel. Introducing CQ Wi-Fi, he has graciously captured all this footage and made the routes for this challenge, so a huge thanks to him, and let's find out if we can make this ridiculous idea work. As a side note, we'll be playing on the PC version only, in case you're wondering. Starting with the tutorial, I'll really quick bring up the one rule that we have. You see those three colored circles? We aren't allowed to swap them at any time, as you'd expect. While we technically might use Tails or Knuckles to attack an enemy or something, we will only ever be in full control of Sonic. Now in Seagate, Omachow really wants us to try out all the characters and use their moves to get through the stage. As you'll see here, we're supposed to switch to Tails and fly over this large gap, but instead, we can make Sonic run at the wall and ascend way higher than Tails could ever dream of getting. This is an unintended technique called the Ultimate Afterburner Kick. On some walls, you can launch yourself upwards by sliding into the wall and pressing jump at the right time. While it's very cool and useful, it only works with walls that have slight angles and not the ones that sit at 90 degrees. We'll abbreviate this trick by calling it UABK for the rest of this video. So now we have to do a few more of these UABKs since we're mostly moving vertically. Next, we have these flapper enemies, which normally you'd use Tails to destroy, but thankfully Sonic can just use his tornado jump to not only take care of the baddies, but also get the necessary height to move forward. Next is the power section, but Sonic doesn't need some weird echidna. What, are you serious? Our main obstacle is this giant brick that we'd normally use Knuckles to break through, but lucky for us, a team blast can destroy the brick as well. And when I say destroy a brick, I literally mean one. What that means is we need to do several afterburner kicks to build up the team blast meter, use it to destroy one brick, and rinse and repeat. This takes a pretty long time, but you can eventually get through the wall and continue on. And after that, we're basically done and make it through the tutorial. But now it's time to start the actual levels. So enough of the jibber jabber, let's get this show on the road. Ha! Think I'd miss this? Time to crack that Eggman wide open! Yeah, let's party! Seaside Hill's first and easiest obstacle is the red power gate that automatically switches your characters. With Sonic, we can just bop right over that with no issues at all. A UABK with a combination of two tornado jumps helps us clear this very tall segment. This next jump, though, is gonna be a lot harder since we can't use a UABK with all the walls being 90 degrees. So instead, a very well-timed jump in Tornado can just barely send Sonic to the sides. And that pretty much wraps up Seaside Hill, so next up is Ocean Palace. And almost right away, we have this giant building blocking our path, but Sonic doesn't care. With a UABK and Tornado Jump, he can soar over half the building and fall through the roof since there's no collision. This next part, which is supposed to require Tails is amusing, because you don't even need to utilize any hard tricks, just basic jumps and a tornado will work perfectly. And this fan? <laughs> Please, we can kick at the wall and fly ourselves up that way. Now again, another building is gonna be in the way, but we can kick off this little curb and fall through the roof. Now this fan may seem troublesome because it's a lot easier to get caught in its breeze, but on the left is a slanted wall, and we all know what that means, UABK to the rescue. But this is only the beginning. Let me just show you the most difficult and insane skip in the game. That was a combination of two tricks, Rocket Excel Cancel and Light Speed Attack. I'll try my best to explain these so it makes sense. So, Rocket Excel Cancel allows you to take the speed of a Rocket Excel and transfer it into a regular slide. In case you don't know, a Rocket Excel is when you hold the action button to roll into a ball. When your team gets close enough while doing this, you let go of the action button for a boost of speed. You can also press the action button again for extra speed and even spam it if your team stays close by. To do this trick, you must charge a Rocket Excel and release, and when Knuckles is about to kick you, press jump. With correct timing, you should slide. And that is Rocket Excel Cancel. This technique on its own doesn't do much, but that's where Light Speed Attack comes in. 
In order to pull this off, you have to first use a Team Blast away from enemies. After using Team Blast, the meter for it will go down. So in this time frame, you must charge up a Rocket Excel and perform a Rocket Excel cancel, and immediately after, press the action button to activate the light speed attack. If done right, you'll launch extremely high into the air. This is a very interesting trick because of how many layers it has in order for it to all work. And this isn't the only time this complex jump has to be done. These fans prevent us from using UABK, so it's required here, and it has to be done over this building as well. Strangely though, there's an invisible roof that we can actually stand on, and I'm not sure why that's there. Then this building is barely possible to clear, because the only way to get over it is to use a UABK off this tiny pillar. And after all of that, Ocean Palace is actually doable. Following that is our first boss fight, Acog. There's not much to say, since you'd want to use Sonic anyway. You just spam away at the Hawk and you'll win. Grand Metropolis is pretty straightforward. Although CQ decided to get fancy and use a UABK off this wall just so we could hit this boost and get the balloon. Because, tiff, why not, right? And if you thought running on top of a bridge was too boring, well, Sonic can just speed through underneath it for no particular reason. Power plan is more of the same. CQ decided to jump off this wall just to save a little time as well. And heck, why bother taking the baddies out when you can use speed and momentum to carry yourself over to this switch? A similar thing is done here where we ignore the enemies and fly off the wall, although it comes close to not working. And here's another flying segment, but since there's so many enemies, you can easily just use Sonic to bounce off them. As you'll probably expect, the fights against the other teams are gonna be a breeze. Just spin attack Team Rose until you knock them off the stage, and that's it. But now on to Casino Park, which I'm sure many of you have painful memories of trying to move around in the pinball machines. That is child's play compared to the tricks we have to do here. Examine A, trying to break glass only Knuckles can break. You could spend hours trying to smash it with Sonic, but that's not gonna work. Your only glimmer of hope here is that you spam the tornado enough that you manage to clip through the collision and pass through the glass. There is no consistent way to do this. It's just sheer dumb luck if it happens. And guess what? It gets worse. Examine B. You're supposed to punch this launch pad with knuckles and fly towards this pinball machine. Obviously, we gotta get pretty creative to get past this. The only solution is to pull off two extremely well-timed rocket excels at full speed, then jump, use a tornado jump, and dash forward. This is easier said than done. Carrying that initial momentum requires stupidly precise inputs. But alas, if everything goes right, you can just barely make it over the ledge and move on. Funny enough, this was CQ's first time ever doing this on P so he basically exploded. And after that was another light speed jump. But this one in particular is really fun to watch because of the extreme height of the building and Sonic having no issues getting across it. And following that is another extremely precise jump. Again, the momentum had to be pristine or there's just no way to clear this gap. The final jump is through this very narrow corridor and across another roof. And just like that, we're at the end of the stage. Bingo Highway starts with a light speed jump, followed by a well-timed tornado and dash forward. Right after that is more glass, and we already know that that's not going to be a fun time. Again, more lucky collision, and we can pass right through it. And if you thought you've seen it all, check this insanity out. CQ does an expertly timed rocket excel, a jump followed by a tornado, moves forward a little bit more, and then light speed attacks up to the top. If there wasn't an enemy nearby, there's no way this could have been done, but alas, you can actually clear this. And that's the last big obstacle, thereby getting us almost halfway through Sonic Heroes. The next boss is nothing special. Robot Carnival is just a fly in the wind. But Rail Canyon has a fun start as we just straight up skip some of the level with a huge jump. This works because the out of bounds zone is much lower in this stage so you can pull stuff like this off. Surprisingly, this level was pretty straightforward. We just needed to play well and it was more than possible. Well, that's until we got to this part where we had to use a light speed jump to get up and that wasn't easy because the fan was giving us less room to work with. But after a couple tries you can get up there and you just have to be careful not to get blown around by the fan. And then came Bullet Station. Near the beginning we have this metal grate to go through, but unlike the glass, there's no walls around us to try to clip through. And you can't go through this door either. There's not much of a way to get enough speed to do so. So for the first time, we are completely stuck and can't make any progress. Which unfortunately confirms that we cannot beat Sonic Heroes with only Sonic. And that really stinks because we got pretty darn far. But for the sake of everyone's curiosity, let's try out the other stages and see if those are possible or not. 
Our next battle is with Egg Albatross, and it's really simple since you just spin attack his ship until it's down. Frog Forest is more the same thing. There's a few skips here and there, but it's painless. Lost Jungle is another level without many issues. This jump may look impossible because there's no solid ground to land on, but you can actually jump off the tree branch if you land in just the right spot. And after that, we finally go back to a character fight, and you just spam Shadow and Pals till they're done for. But now, it's Hang Castle time. And check this skip out. We can roll off the ground here with a lot of speed, then use a tornado and dash towards this enemy. In front of us is a power section that we can't do much about, but since this is a castle, we can use light speed jump and climb right over the gap. That strat's not gonna work for this door though, but like many other objects in the game, you can clip through this with enough speed. But farther up, we need to pull this lever, which is a problem because only Tails can do that. I don't know why Sonic can't pull a freaking lever, but I guess he has no hand-eye coordination. The lever reveals rings that Sonic needs to continue the level, but since we can't access them, Hang Castle is not possible. Moving to Mystic Mansion, we make a pretty high jump followed up with a light speed attack. It all happens so fast that it's hard to tell what's happening with this trick. Now this mansion has this bizarre LSD type of section, and each split road wants you to use each character individually, but it's surprisingly easy to get around with only Sonic. For the Knuckles section, you literally just use a well-timed Rocket Excel and the fans to get across. And for Tails section, just get some speed and jump. It's honestly kind of shocking that they didn't make the platforming harder to ensure you had to use these specific characters. And after that is Robot Storm. You blow up the robots and there you go. Egg Fleet is a heavily vertically based stage, so you know we're busting out that light speed jump for some help. We use a light speed attack here to help us get higher on stable ground. Otherwise, this was a pretty doable yet long level. And Final Fortress was another simple level. Well, for the most part. A UABK is required here though, and we had to land on this very narrow platform. And after that, another UABK plus a tornado needed to be done. While this pathway is narrow, it's more than doable to get through. After that, a light speed attack is required to climb up here. And it's funny how the robot literally just spawned in and was almost instantly destroyed. So shortly after that, we wrap up the last level of the game. For Egg Emperor, his fight is pretty much the same as it usually is, rip off his armor and go wild on him. But of course this isn't really the end, as of now we need to finish off Metal Madness, the secret final boss. And lucky for us, the whole point of this is to take him down as supersonic and use Team Blast, so no fancy tricks need to be done here. And now that we've hit the Metal Lad one final time, that wraps up this challenge. So out of every level, the only ones we couldn't complete were Bullet Station and Hang Castle. Only two levels out of 23. That really goes to show just how useful Sonic is in this game. Not only is he fast and can attack enemies quickly, but he has a ton of broken tricks as well. But what if we try to beat Sonic Heroes without Sonic? Well, tune in tomorrow, or right now if you're watching this in the future, to find out how that goes. If you want to see the complete runs of every level from this video, CQ has a playlist that you can also watch right now. So with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Until next time.